So it's quarter past five. I'm in Cape Tribulation in far north Queensland. This is the second last night of our holiday here. We've been here for five days now and we were here yesterday afternoon. And this is just a handheld shot that I took from this location. You can see how nice it was. We had golden light. But Mother Nature served me up a lot of clouds. Now the sun sets behind the mountain range here in Cape Tribulation. So you've got to get here at least an hour before sunset to get that nice golden light onto these mangrove trees here that we're going to photograph. Now I'm facing away from the sea. The reason is it's so bright on the sea and I can't put a grad filter on to try to balance out the exposure. So I'm going to shoot towards the land and I've got these beautiful mangrove trees. Now we don't get these in southeast Queensland. They're endemic to the north of Australia and you look all the roots just hang out and it's just such a beautiful scene. So the gear I'm using today is my Nikon D500, the Tekina 11 to 20 at around 12 mils and I'm only using a Nissi circular polarizing filter. That's all I need just to help me balance out the exposure and to cut down on some of the reflections here on the water. I'm just using a, a shotgun microphone on my D500 because I don't have my normal mic around. And the sand here is so soggy I don't want a second camera because the little tripod just sinks into the mud here. This is what we're going to photograph. We're going to take a couple of photos from here. You can see just above the mountains here, it's blue sky. If I just take a single exposure, I'm going to be overexposing the sky to expose the foreground properly. And I'll show you that as well. But I think I'm going to have to take a three shot bracketed image. I'm going to bracket my photos to get a correctly exposed image. Now, there's nothing wrong with bracketing, especially when, look, there is just no wind. Let's get cracking and take some photos. So as you can see, look at that. It is just so beautiful. And I'm using leading lines. I've got all these mangroves here. What you can't see is the blue sky. And I'll just tilt the camera up a little bit here. Can you see that blue sky? Well, it's white because it's all blown out. Remember with video, I'm shooting at 9x16, but on my camera, I'm shooting at 6x4. So now let's take some photos. My settings for my photos are going to be f11, ISO 100. I'll just balance out the shutter speed and I'll put all the settings in the photos that you see here during the video. Let's start taking some photos. So I've moved the camera and before I was saying the reason I wasn't shooting into the ocean was because I couldn't balance out the sky. And you can see why I really can't put a grad filter on there because there's just no way of setting up the grad filter without hindering the scene. If I put a grad filter on, a lot of the sand here would be dark and you could see that line through the sand. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a shot and I'm going to bracket it just like the first set. But I want to show you here really why you need a polarizer. And I'll turn the polarizer filter around here. Look at that. And you see the sky is just white. But if I screw the polarizer and keep going around, look at that. I'm getting all that detail in the sky there. And if I just increase my aperture, look at that. Beautiful. Now I have a correctly exposed image. Now on video, it's telling me 1 50th of a second, F8, ISO 100. So I've got the sky correctly exposed, but just like my normal photos, my foreground here, the mangroves, would be underexposed. And this is why I'm bracketing. I don't have wind perfect for bracketing an image. A lot of photographers do it, they just don't tell you that. Sometimes they'll say, oh, we're just blending photos. Well, if you're blending a couple of photos, you're bracketing. You're taking one photo for the foreground, one photo for the background, and if the foreground and background are different exposures, they're bl bracketing the image. Let's take some photos. So I've moved again. I'm racing the clock. I don't want to lose this beautiful light that I've got here. I was complaining a bit at the start that I didn't have that golden light. But you've got to make things work for yourself, especially when you're on holidays. And I've tucked myself into the mangroves. And look at the framing that I've got here. I've got this mangrove just framing the left. It's just arcing that left-hand side of the frame. And then I've just got the nice beach and the mountains in the background. And that cloudy sky 
above there. It just looks really nice and it looks even better as a 6x4 image. Sometimes when I shoot video like this, it gives me an idea of what a pano would look like. And like this, cropped at 16x9, this would look so nice. There's not too much beach, just enough mangroves. And look, the mangrove leaves just hang down over here. Would look beautiful as a correctly exposed image. Now, just before, I was talking about using a polarizer to balance out the sky. Here, what I've done is I've used a polarizer to balance out my foreground. The first photo here shows I've put the polarizer around, so the foreground here is quite bright. The second photo, I've twisted the polarizer, and look at the foreground. It's quite dark. But this is what you have to be mindful about when you're taking photos. And this is why I love using Live View on my digital SLR, because I can see in real time. I can adjust the polarizer to suit my needs. And that's what you've got to do. Use a polarizer. Use your tools that you have at hand to suit what you want in the photo. Let's take a couple of photos. So I've moved again. I've moved right up on the beach here, looking out into the ocean. You can see the right in the center here is just way overexposed. This is going to take at least five, maybe seven photos to correctly expose. I don't know if my idea behind this scene is going to work out, but I'm not going to take the chance of it saying, well, it's not going to work out. I'm just not going to take it. I'm going to take it. I may never come back to this exact same spot. I'd rather take photos and then when I get back home in Brisbane, look at it and go like, yep, okay, it didn't work out. Rather than say, what if I'd taken that shot and it turned out how I wanted. Now remember I'm saying I'm bracketing and I'm bracketing because the conditions are ideal. You can see there is not a breath of wind and it's still 30 degrees, quarter to six in the evening and the humidity is around 70%. So I'm just dripping sweat, but I'm out here. This is my one afternoon that I can get out here to take some photos. I'm going to try a five and then a seven shot bracketed image to this, just so that I can blend all of it. And look how I framed it here. See, I've got this old branch here that's broken up. It's just right in the foreground here. Then I've got these two stuck in the corner here. Let's take a few photos. Now, I wasn't going to include these images in this video, but I'm leaving these here to show you that everyone makes mistakes. You might look at this image and say, it's great. It's a beautiful image, Charles. It is a great image, but looking at it very carefully, critiquing my own photo, I could see that I could have had an image 10 times as better. How? All I would have had to do is lower my tripod down, look at the mountain range in the background, the tree is blocking most of their mountain range. If I had lowered my tripod down by about 50 centimeters, tilted the camera up a little bit, I would have seen the rest of the beach, I would have seen the mountain range, and I would have still got all that tree in there. And the tree would have given me like an arcing over the top. It would have just framed my image so much better. The next time I'm faced with the scene like this, I will know that before I take the shot, how about I lower the tripod, tilt the camera up, and see if having the background works. And I know that if I'd lowered my tripod and tilted the camera up, it would have worked. So you might be wondering, how am I working out? When do I need a three image bracketed, a five, or a seven shot to get a correctly exposed image? Well, it all depends on your scene. When I was outside, all I needed was three. The dynamic range of my scene wasn't that severe, so I got away with three very easily, like you saw. But here, I am really hamstrung. Like I said, the foreground here is very dark. The leaves here in this tree is quite dark, but my background over there is so bright, and you can see that in the video, all the background is just blown out. So I set up the camera to take a five-set bracketed image. Two underexposed, correctly exposed, two overexposed, and then I looked using the RGB highlights indicator, I could still see 
on the two that were underexposed, the most severely underexposed, which was two stops underexposed, still showed me a bit of blinky. So I said, okay, well, I'm still blowing out the highlights, two stops underexposed. So I decided to shoot a seventh frame HDR image. So I'm going three stops underexposed, three stops overexposed. Now, if I don't need right at the end, the two last frames that were severely overexposed, I don't have to use them. But it gives me that option that when I blend, I can see which photos I need and which photos I don't need. For this scene here, I used a seven shot HDR to get the correctly exposed image. But this is what the photo looked like correctly exposed. You can see, look at the foreground. It is just so dark. Now let's see if we can find one or two last compositions before it gets dark. It's nearly six o'clock, so we're losing light very quickly. So this is my last composition for the day. It's six o'clock and I just want it to reflect different to what all the other images were. All the other images included trees and all that. This one here, I just want to show what this beach looked like. It's very nice, very flat. And look at the sky and above us here. We've got some storm clouds in the sky, or rain clouds. Look, can you see like there's just a bit deeper water just in front of us here and it's arcing. This is something where you have to look. You're walking on the beach saying like, I want something to grab my viewer's attention. If I was towards a tree there, all I had was just sand. It's just barren, just void of sort of an impact. But here, it looks so nice. And here, this image here, I'm definitely going to put a grad filter. Why? My sky is very even here. The mountain range is very even here. So I can put a grad filter to balance out the bright sky against the foreground here. Let's take some photos. And look, there's some golden light over there that wasn't there just five minutes ago. If I had just packed up and gone home, I would have missed this. And now, look, there's gold light on the water over there. I took a photo and it is magic. And I'm just going to stick around for a couple more minutes because it's close to sunset. I want to see if those clouds just light up a bit more. This is my last night in Cape Tribulation. Tomorrow we head down to Port Douglas. Maybe I'll get a chance to take some photos. Maybe not. Doesn't worry me. I'm on holidays. Just a bit of the water down here reflecting the clouds just looks awesome. Well, let's just see if I can get one more photo before we pack up. So as you can see, the light's faded now, but I still got a couple of really nice images. But once the light faded, I quickly put a six stop ND filter on with the three stop medium grad and the polarizer to give me a nice 30 second long exposure. That's all I wanted, just 30 seconds. The light's fading so much now that I didn't want to do any guesstimation. So 30 second exposure gave me a really nice sublim image just to finish off the day to show like end of the day in Cape Tribulation. So if you found value in this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Really helps me out. Stay safe, enjoy photography, even when you're out on holidays, and I'll see you next time.